We make it happen, yeah. By any means, I'm with my team, ain't no distraction. That Bob on my tool, and we trigger happy, cause we bought that action. We bought that act. I want the kingdom, and I want it all, and no, not a fraction. No, not a fraction. Cause we make it happen. We make it, we make it, yeah, we make it happen, yeah. By any means, I'm with my team, ain't no distraction. Ain't no distraction. That Bob on my weapon got stripped to an ammo, and I'll get to clapping. I want the kingdom and I want it all and no not a fraction. No not a fraction. Cause we make it happen. We make it Cause we made it happen. No, we made it happen. We made it happen. Yeah, we made it happen. I can't lose a brother. Got love for my brother. I'm not with subtraction. Who better than one? It's not by the color. Yeah, we not racist. In case you were curious. Curious doing. Keep checking for bloodline. What is your pedigree? Point black period. Who you in green? If you're not in the truth. Who you alone? You would think it's mysterious. Way mysterious. You would say we a cult. No, no, no. But we know you're delirious. Nigga, you I will give a shout out, Say where you at. but I'm holding my tongue I ain't The last time I did that, um, the niggas are gone We make it happen, yeah By any means, I'm with my team, ain't no distraction 
That bob on my tool and we trigger happy cause we bout that action. We bout that action. I want the kingdom and I want it all and no not affection. No not affection. Cause we make it happen. We make it, we make it, we make it happen. By any means, I'm with my team. Let us know y'all can hear us, man. We bout to crank this thing up right now. That bob on my weapon got scriptural ammo and I get to clapping. I want the kingdom and I want it all and no not affection. Can y'all hear us, family? Can y'all hear us? Let us know. Cause we make it Many a car, you know the rest You can repent or perish yeah. Man, you was born to be zealous But instead, you got to be careful Y'all hear us, let us know if y'all can hear us online Let us know if y'all can hear us over the app You the walking dead, no knocks in your head Your body just walking around and you did It's going down, we push the ground You know we bringing the thunder We trying to add, so try to the vision Cause you know it's strength in numbers When Christ come back, we on the tech We go from fishes to hunters When Christ come back, we on the tech We go from fishes to hunters Make it happen. Yeah. By any means, I'm You're on the phone with IUIC Mississippi Presents. Who we talking to? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can get those off our website, OriginalRoyalty.com. Go to Original Royalty and you'll be able to find all the information there, my brother. OriginalRoyalty.com. OriginalRoyalty.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We about to crank up this radio show, though, bro. We appreciate you. We appreciate you calling in. We about to jump into our radio show. We on the air right now. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, brother. All praise to the Most High. Brother called in. Need some friends, man. Hey, this word going out. I'm telling you the word of God going out. Our people is finding out that they Israelites, and they ready to keep the law, statutes, and commandments so they can get the kingdom of God. I pray my brothers and sisters in Port Gibson, I pray you jump on board. Biggest movement on the planet Earth man. We need to get right. All right? All praises to the Most High. With that being said, my name is Officer Gedalia. To my left, I have Officer Zariah. Officer Zariah and we are IUIC Mississippi Presents. It's cold, so we got our jacket on. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But I'll praise to the most high. Um, we are getting ready to crank off this today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to be uh, temptation. Straight like that. Temptation. That's what we're going over today. Temptation. And every last one of you online can attest to this. I can attest to it. We all can attest to it. You got to be real with yourself. You got to give yourself uh, uh, a full examination, just like your doctor. You go to the doctor's office, he's checking your knees, your throat, your back, your heart, your cough, your lungs, everything. Same thing with us. We got to check ourselves every single day in this spiritual walk to make sure that we write with the Most High God. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and crank into the um, the uh, um, our uh, disclaimer, and then we're going to jump into class, all right? So... Let's go ahead and read that disclaimer, Austin. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. All praises to the Most High. So with that being said, we want to make sure that we always uh, point that out, that we are not a hate group because we got many enemies that lie on us, slander us, and put us out there as if we are nothing but more than a militia group or a hate group, and we don't believe in that. We believe in following the, following the laws of the land. All right, so today, temptation. Now, we all can be honest with ourselves and know we deal with temptation on a daily basis. All you brothers, all you sisters, you deal with temptation on a daily basis, all right? So we're going to go into what these temptations are and how to combat them, all right? What these temptations are and how to combat them. So we're going to start off in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 13, all right? 1 Corinthians, can I get somebody to describe for me? Uh, I could probably start the scribe off right here. But if I can get somebody to continually scribe for me, that'd be good. All right? So we're going to start off with the book of 1 Corinthians. Let me see. 1 Corinthians 
I might have spelled that wrong. No, I did. Chapter 10 and verse 13. If I get one of you brothers to scribe, that'd be great. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Uh -huh. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So the Bible says there is no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man. All men go through temptation. All women go through temptation. Every last one of us. So none of us can say, oh, I don't deal with lust. I don't deal with a covetous spirit at times. I don't deal with a lying spirit. I don't deal with whatever, whatever spirit you're dealing with at this current time. None of us can say that we don't deal with anything. Right? Matter of fact, get that real quick in First um, John chapter 1, verse 8. Just so my brother, brothers and sisters can understand. Because a lot of us say that, oh, I'm good. I ain't dealing with nothing right now. If you ain't dealing with nothing right now, show me the secret. What's your secret? You understand? If you ain't dealing with no type of lust or temptation or evil thoughts or whatever it is, what is your secret? And you need to share it with all Israel so we can go home. Because I'm still trying to figure out what the remedy is. I'm still trying to figure out what's the, uh, what's the, 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 the combination. You understand? Because we all dealing with it every single day. All right? Uh, go ahead. First John chapter 1 and verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So the Bible says if we say we have no sin or we not tempted, um, the Bible says we, what did it say? I'm sorry. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So the Bible says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We're not being honest with ourselves. To say that we don't deal with anything, we're not being honest with ourselves. Sometimes you'll catch brothers and sisters that'll say that. Oh, I don't deal with nothing. Oh, I'm good. Everything's going good right now. We know you're lying. But we be wanting to see if you're going to actually come out and tell us the truth. You understand? Because if you ask me what I'm dealing with, I'm going to tell you I'm enduring. I'm trying to hold a line, stay in the spirit, battling all kinds of spirits every single day. We all are. So the Bible says if you say that you have no sin or you're not dealing with anything, you're deceiving yourself, the truth not in you. Go ahead. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Read. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. We do what? Make him a liar. You're making God a liar if you say you don't have no sin. Go ahead. And his word is not in us. And the word can't be in you because the word tell you that all men have sinned. All men go through temptation. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Read 10, 13 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Read. They have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. The Bible says there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. All men deal with some type of temptation. All women deal with some type of temptation. Never say that you don't deal with anything. Because you're making God a liar like we just read. God told you that all men are going to deal with something. Go ahead. But God is faithful. But it says, although you're tempted, the Lord is still faithful. His word is still faithful. Go ahead. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. And he won't suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. A lot of us say that, oh, man, God, I can't handle this. This is too hard for me. The Lord said, nah, I know your limit. I know your breaking point, and I can push you all the way to your limit and stop it right there. Stop the temptation before you break. But whatever God puts us through, it's for us to learn from it, to grow from it. Right? Go ahead. But we'll with the temptation but, also. But with, with that same temptation that you have, go ahead. Make a way to escape. We'll do what? Make a way to escape. Read. That you may be able to bear it. That you may be able to bear it. Whatever sin or that you're dealing with, a temptation you're dealing with, the Lord telling you he will, he will give you a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. What is our escape? Give me that, Psalm 71 and verse 2. Let's read 1 and 2. What is the way to escape? Let's see. Psalm 71 and verse 2. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 71 and verse 2. Read. Deliver me in thy righteousness. 
and cause me to escape. The Bible says, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to what? Escape. To escape. Read. Incline thine ear unto me. Read. And save me. And save me. So the, the King David is asking the Lord to allow him to escape by his righteousness. What is righteousness? Give me that in the New Testament. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Let's go to the New Testament. What is God's righteousness that is going to cause us to escape our temptations? Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 6. Read. And they were both righteous before God. And they were both righteous before God. Read. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So when you walk in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, that helps you escape your temptation. That helps you escape your sin. This Bible is your escape. This Bible is how you're going to be able to stand, right? Uh, give me that real quick in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Steadfast, read. Unmovable. Don't be movable. Don't allow your sin and your temptation to cause you to be removed from the presence of the Lord. Provide, cause you to be removed from these commandments. You understand? Because a lot of times the things that you go through, you will allow that to start to um, the spirit of, well, the Bible can't help me. God can't help me. I can't get over this because of this. I can't get over this because of that. You got to release that and put that in the hands of the Most High God. You have to follow the commandments. You got to follow the blueprint. The Lord said he's going to cause you to escape. How do you escape? By applying righteousness, which is the commandments. How do you escape? By standing steadfast in it, being unmovable, not allowing nobody to shake your faith, not allowing your wife to shake your faith, your husband to shake your faith, your children, your brothers and sisters, your family members in the world. You understand? Don't let them shake your faith. Stand strong in the Lord. Read. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And keep yourself occupied in the work of the Lord. Keep yourself occupied in flyer missions. Keep yourself occupied in talking to brothers and sisters, conference calls, daily bread classes, um, radio shows. Always hearing the word of God constantly. That's how you stay occupied in the work of the Lord. That's how you keep your mind occupied and away from sin. Read. For as, you, for as much as you know... That your labor is not in vain. Because you're not laboring in vain, read. In the Lord. In the Lord. Man, I, that's, I love that right there. You ain't never going to. Get that real quick in Baruch 428. You can't never go too far for God. You can't never go too far to keep these commandments. You understand? I, I heard people use the, the scripture that says being righteous over much. They say, oh, you're trying to be too righteous. You're trying to keep the commandments to the best. You're trying to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. Oh, you being over righteous. No, that's not what the scripture is talking about. Over-righteous meaning can't nobody teach you nothing. I'm over-righteous. You can't teach me. Right. That's what that's going into. It's not saying that I can't go hard as I possibly can for God. Watch what this scripture say. Read. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. Read. For as it was your mind to go astray from God. It was your mind. Listen, when you was in the world, your mind was far so far from God, it, it make your head spin. When you was in the world, your mind was far from God. My mind was far from God. I wasn't thinking about God when I was in the club. I wasn't thinking about God when I was rolling up dope. I wasn't thinking about God when I was out here doing all this evil, and neither were you. You understand? You didn't know God. You didn't know the commandments. You didn't know you was Israel. You didn't know that Christ was a black man. So you was doing all manners of evil. So the Bible says it was your mind to go astray from God in your sin. Read. So being returned. So being returned to God. Read. Seek him ten times more. So how am I being over-righteous by trying to seek God ten times more? It don't make no sense. Showing you that that scripture is not talking about that. Get that real quick in Sirach 43 and 30 real quick. So God giving us a chance to escape. Stay occupied in the work. Stay occupied in the commandments. Learning. You understand? Fasting. Praying. Read. Sirach chapter 43 and verse 30. When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. It said, when you glorify God, exalt him. Exalt the Lord as much as you can. Go ahead. For even yet will he far exceed. Because even yet, God going to far exceed your expectations. That's just causing you to escape. You're like, man, I don't know if I can ever get over this. The Lord like, no, nah, just apply the commandments. Follow the counsel you've been given by leadership. 
continue to fast and pray. I'll help you get out of this. But we say, no, nah, man, it's too hard for me. I can't do it. But he said he ain't going to tempt you above that which you are able. But we'll, with the temptation, give you a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Read what you got. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength. No, nah, I'm, going, I'm going too hard for the Lord. Put forth all your strength. No, nah, I'm, I'm doing too much. Put forth all your strength. The Bible says ten times more and put forth all your strength. Read. And be not weary. And be not what? Be not weary. Like, man, I'm going too hard for God. I'm doing, I'm putting too much work in. <laughs> Ain't no such thing. Because the Bible says he going to far exceed your expectations. Read. For you can never go far enough. The Bible says you can never go far enough for the most high. You can never get to the level to say, I've done too much for God. The scriptures say, get that real quick in, um, in uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 10. You can't never go too far for the most high in doing the work. Who said that? <laughs> Read. Luke chapter 17 and verse 10. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you. So when you've done everything that has been commanded, to, commanded you by God and you meet Christ face to face. Read. Say, we are unprofitable servants. You still have to say after all you've done, you know what? I'm still an unprofitable servant. Because I can't never go far enough. You understand? Go ahead. We have done that which was our duty to do. It's your duty to keep God's law. It's your duty to love your neighbor. It's your duty to put in work for the most high. That's your duty. That's your reasonable service. You understand? According to the scriptures. Right? So the Lord said with the temptation, he's going to give you a chance to escape. How you escape? Going hard for the most high. Praying and fasting. Putting in work, learning these scriptures so you can apply them. So, and once you apply them, you can go and teach other brothers. You sisters can be a righteous example to other sisters to raise up all the tribes of Jacob so we can go home. You understand? Go to Hebrews 2 and verse 16. The, the scripture says that all the temptation that we go through is common to man. All men have gone through temptation and go through temptation. Let's see who else went through temptation. Give me that real quick in Hebrews 2 and 16. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. Read. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Read. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. The Bible says Christ came on the seed of Abraham. Showing you Christ was not immaculate, co immaculately concepted like your Christian pastor had taught you. The Bible says Christ, the son of God, was made like unto the seed of Abraham. Made from the seed of Abraham. Right? For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but took, uh, he took on him the seed of Abraham. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. He was made like his brothers through sex between a man and a woman. Joseph and Mary, his father and mother. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. So he could be merciful and faithful. What was going to make Christ be able to be merciful to us? Let's see. Go ahead. In things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Read. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted. What was Christ? Being tempted. Christ was tempted, brothers and sisters. I always say that. Christ was, the Bible says he was tempted. You mean to tell me? Christ never in his life saw an attractive woman. We the children of Israel. We the salt of the earth. You understand? Christ was also tempted. And we're going to read about the temptations that he went through when, when Satan came to him. We're going to read about that next in Luke chapter 4. So when you're going through your temptations, you're like, man, don't nobody know what I'm going through. The Bible said Christ was tempted. That's what makes him a merciful and faithful high priest. That's why he gave us grace to get ourselves together. Because you go make mistakes. A just man fall how many times? Seven times. That's just a number. That's just a number of completion. You're going to fall more than seven times. The scripture says you got to uh, uh, forgive your brother 70 times seven. That's just a number. What if you offend me? four hundred? Because 70 times seven is 490. Right. So what if you offend me 490 times and on the 491st time you offend me, I just knock your teeth out. <laughs> when is that lawful? Right. It ain't. <laughs> go ahead. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, 
He is able to secure them that are tempted. So he's able to comfort those that are tempted. That's what that this is the heavy thing about the Bible that our people don't understand. That our people refuse when you refuse God's commandments, you have no understanding of the Bible. And this is why your pastors can't truly give you the scriptures to comfort you in your temptation when you're going through trials and tribulation. Because they don't know the word. All they're going to say is just believe on God, pay your tithes, and everything going to be all right. But we're seeing right here, the Bible says we're supposed to give our people the understanding of the scriptures to stand stand fast, to be unmovable, to always abound in the work of the Lord and not be weary in doing so, to be righteous, to be able to escape from our trials, be able to escape from the temptation. And they're still going to be there. Even when you keep the commandments, because we got to endure until the end. Get that real quick in Matthew 24, 13. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The Bible says he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You're going to be saved by endurance. When the trials and tribulations come, continue to fight. Continue to push. Continue to, 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 to correct yourself when you have evil thoughts. This is what he's saying. You understand? Go from there. Go to the book of Luke chapter 4. Start at verse 1. We're going to read Luke chapter 4 verse 1. So the Bible says that God or Christ was tempted. Therefore, he is merciful and a faithful high priest. He can succor or comfort those who also are tempted. But when you deny that it's a temptation... <laughs> when you deny that you don't do no sin, then how are you going to be comforted? Right. I don't deal with nothing. What I need comfort for? You do need comfort because we all dealing with something. Watch this. Read. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Read. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. It said he was 40 days tempted of the devil. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, went through temptations, brothers and sisters. It said he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. You understand? He was, temp he was tempted after his fast. Read. In the, and in those days, he did not eat. He did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So he's hungry. Right after the fast, you know how you just come, for those of you, for those of you that fast, some of you may be new in the truth, you've never fasted. So for those of you that fast, when you get done with that fast, you want long in water. Your body craves water. Your body craves food. You understand? So as soon as Christ came off his fast, the brother was hungry. <laughs> he was made like into the, uh, into the likeness of his brethren. So he, yeah, he did get hungry. Right? Come on. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread so now the satan is tempting him said look if you say if you are who you say you are if you're really the son of god you see this stone turn this stone into bread tempting christ immediately after his fast when he's vulnerable right but watch what happened read and jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god the christ was so quick on his feet he hit the he hit satan with like hey I see what you're trying to do. You try to you try to get me to fall into temptation because the lust of the flesh is on me right now, and my flesh is lusting for food. And in my lust for food, you're gonna cause me to follow you and do what you say instead of following the Lord. I'm gonna just go get me something to eat. I ain't gotta get go turn this stone into no bread. I am the son of God. I ain't gotta prove that to you. You understand? But the Bible is telling us Christ was quick on his feet. He said, look, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Read. And the devil taking him up and to a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So it says that first he tempted Christ with the lust of the flesh. He went after Christ's flesh first because he knew Christ was and hungered. Right. Just like Satan come to you when you vulnerable. When you going through trials and tribulations, Satan creeping in your ear, and he said, man, you know you ain't got to follow those dudes, right? You know enough about the Bible. You can go and start your own congregation. Like, why are you, why are you taking that from that officer? Why are you taking correction from that, that, that captain or that deacon or the bishop? Like, why are you listening to them? That's what, they'll come, that's what Satan is creeping in your ear and saying. And he's not going to come to your ear and say it directly to you. He's going to use a family member. He's going to use a husband or a wife that's disgruntled that don't believe. He'll use your children, Right? He'll use that woman that worked with you all the time and ask you, why don't you hang out? 
You never come to the Christmas parties. I've been liking you. I like you. I want to get to know you. Why don't you, why, why don't you let me get your number? Why, why, why we can't exchange numbers? Satan coming after your flesh, the lust of your flesh. It's like he came after Christ. Now read verse 5 again. Verse 5. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh -huh. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Uh -huh. If thou therefore wilt worship me. He said, all these kingdoms can be yours. All this power and riches and glory can be yours right here, right now. Just worship me. Read. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. He said, but all you got to do is worship me at the end of the day. See, Satan real crafty. He's not going to say worship me today. He's going to say you can make an extra 50000 a year if you break the Sabbath. You understand? If, 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 if you wear pants, sisters, if, if, you wear, if you model these pants, I'll give you that modeling contract that you've always wanted. I'll make you the millionaire that you always wanted to be. You understand? Just, just do this Christmas ad for us, right? Uh, sign this recording contract making music to destroy your people. He don't have to come in your ear directly Satan. He can use the elements of the world, the things that you want. He can use it because that's the lust of your eyes. You've been going through poverty. You've been going through trials and tribulations. You ain't never had a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. But you got a talent at rapping or singing. And you want to do it for the body of Israel united in Christ. You want to make money for the church. You want to help the church out. And Satan come and say, man, what you doing? How much they paying you for this? Satan say, you, you, you be like, well, they ain't paying me nothing. It's, it's, it's for the, all the donations go to the school, to the congregation. What? Bro, you could be making millions. You got talent. You got real deal talent. What are you doing wasting your time with these people? You understand? They obviously don't care about you. They're not giving you none of the proceeds. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? He, he'll, come to your, he'll come to you and he'll say that. You spending all your time up at that church? How much they pay you for doing the, the graphic design for the, the bishop's classes and stuff? Oh, they don't pay me nothing. What? You're a marketing genius. You could be making millions on Wall Street. You're working seven days a week making millions. And you're like, yeah, I could be making a lot of money. You're right, I do got talent. Yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> Satan gets you every single time. Because he's coming after the lust of your eyes, the things you see that you've always wanted. That's a temptation. Love the lust of your flesh. Want to go after the, the, the big booty woman or the, or the handsome brother. Knowing you married. That's a temptation. Christ dealt with the same thing on a grander scale. Because what comes with riches and power and rulership? Women. Gluttony. Because you're eating all the time. Drunkenness. Reveling. All that comes with ruling everything. That's why these the most uh, rulers, most kings that you've seen from the past, they be fat. Out of shape. What they working out for? What I got to work out for? <laughs> I'm rich. She going to sleep with me anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get the money anyway. That's the mindset. So when he was bringing those temptations to Christ, it far exceeded anything you and I have ever gone through on that grand of a scale. Right? Go ahead. Verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Read. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. So Christ was quick. He's like, nah, I'm straight. I, 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 I'll take my chances with following the most high God of heaven and earth that created you, Satan. That's what Christ said with, to him. Uh-uh. We're going to worship. I'm going to worship the Lord thy God. That's what I'm talking about right there. When Satan creep in your ear, you choose to serve God first. I'll give you an example. Give me uh, the book of Susanna. Chapter 1. There's only one chapter in Susanna. We'll come right back to that. I just want to give you an example of that. Go to Susanna. Matter of fact, go to Sirach 1830. This will be easy. I'll give you an example. Sirach chapter 18 and verse 30. Sirach chapter 18 and verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. So your appetite is not just what you eat. The woman is your appetite. You're a single brother, you understand? You see a sister out here in the world, and when you, every time you go to Walmart, you go to her register, 
You understand? She nice. She's smiling all in your face. And what you about to do today? What you flirting with you and all that? And one day you break. You say, you know what? Let me exchange numbers with this sister. She pretty. I may be, I may be able to convince her that she an Israelite. That's what Satan tells you. I'm going to be able to convince her that she's an Israelite and that she can come into the, the truth and keep these commandments. Lo and behold, really in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I just can't wait to sleep with her. The Bible said, don't go after your lust. Refrain yourself from your appetite. That's your appetite. Gluttony is your appetite. Some of you love sweets. And you got to have a taste of sweets every single day. Some of you got to have a taste of alcohol every single day, four or five times a day, in excess. I'm not saying when you get home, you want to sip a little wine and wind down for the night after a long day. I ain't, that's not no sin. I ain't saying that sin. But I'm talking about you overindulging in these things to where it becomes excess and now you in sin so the bible says don't go after your lust and refrain refrain yourself from your appetites things that you know gonna cause you to fall in sin read verse 31 if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her if you give your soul the desires that please her it pleases her but it don't please god you understand it's not, it's not allowing you to serve God. It's causing you to go away from the Lord and into your sin. Read. She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. Read. That malign thee. That what? That malign thee. Your enemies can't wait for you to fall. That's some of your family members. That's some of your wives, some of your husbands, some of your children. They can't wait for you to come back to Christmas dinner. They can't wait for you to come back so they can make fun of you about you being in that cult. You understand that? That's a temptation. Christ gave us the example. He showed us an example of how to resist the devil by doing what? Serving the Lord God. Not going after our lust. Not going after our temptations, our idols. Right? Go back to Luke. What you said, 4 and 8? Yes, sir. Read again. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, uh -huh. and him only shalt thou serve. He said, Uh-uh, I'm only serving the Lord. Right? Get that real quick in Deuteronomy, chapter 26 and verse 16. Deuteronomy 26 and verse 16. Matter of fact, read Deuteronomy 5 and verse um, 9. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh -huh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So the Bible says to love God is to keep his commandments. To hate God is to bow yourself down to your idols. Whether it's an image, whether it's your lustful intentions, you understand? Because a lot of times we think of idolatry if it's just like a big picture of white Jesus on the wall and I bow down to it every night and say, uh, all hell white Jesus. That's not it. That's not your only lust. Get that. Or that's not your only idolatry. Get that real quick in Colossians. You know what I wanted. Go ahead. Thank you. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify therefore your members. The Bible says mortify your members. Read. Which are upon the earth. Which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication. Fornication is a member that's upon the earth. That caused you to go away from God. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Whether it's sickness. Uh, when I say sickness, I mean like um, sick things that you're eating. Let me, let me rephrase that. Uncleanness would be like having sex with a woman on her menstrual. That's uncleanness. Uncleanness would be um, eating defiled foods, smoking marijuana, smoking weed, getting drunk. This is all uncleanness that causes you to be defiled. Read. Inordinate affections. Inordinate affections would be like pedophilia, transgender, bestiality, right? Come on. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. Lusting after another man's wife. Watching pornography. This is all evil concupiscence. Strong, evil sexual desires, right? Threesomes. That's evil concupiscence. Read. And covetousness. And covetousness. Wanting somebody's house. Wanting what somebody drives. That's the same thing that Satan was trying to tempt Christ with. To see if Christ was covetous, right? Showing him all the kingdoms of the earth and saying, hey, look, keep me, follow me, and all this will be given unto you. But Christ didn't have that covetous spirit. He believed in the laws. He believed in the commandments. Go ahead. Which is idolatry. You hear this? All these things also fall into the category, a category of idolatry. Is your hand still on Deuteronomy? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and read verse 7. 
Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 7. Then I want you to go back to Colossians. Read. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. The Bible says, God said you shall have no other gods before me. That's called idolatry. Go back. Go back to Colossians 3 and 5 again. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. So these are your temptations. Fornication is a temptation. you tempted to go and fornicate. Read. Uncleanness. You're tempted to be unclean in some way. Read. Inordinate affection. You are tempted by inordinate affection. Some of you go through that on that level. Right? Read. Evil concupiscence. You're tempted to fall into evil concupiscence, to fall into that category. Read. And covetousness. And covetousness. You're, you are tempted to fall into a covetousness spirit, a covetous spirit. Right? Desiring things that are not yours. Read. Which is idolatry. All those things fall into the category of idolatry. When you go into these things, you're worshiping another God. Whatever that is, that is your God that you're worshiping. Go ahead. For which things say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So for those things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. Why? Because that's idolatry. When you follow those things, you're following into idolatry. When you read about uh, Aphrodite, who was... Um, uh, a quote-unquote um, Greek goddess, okay? The goddess of love, fertility. The same thing as Ashtaroth. The same thing as uh, Diana of Ephesus, Wonder Woman. All those things. It's all go back to the queen of heaven, which is known as Ceramesis. Am I saying that right? Ceramesis, right? Which was the mother of Nimrod. They all go back to that, okay? Uh, Isis, um, Ishtar, all those things. Easter. All those things go back into that goddess of fertility, goddess of sex. So when you look into that and you, and, you, and you follow that, you'll notice our women that follow those type of things, they always want to show their body. They want to walk around naked. They want to say the black woman is God. That's where that all comes from. So by worshiping these idols, it causes you to fall into strong sexual desires. The spirit of that idol falls on you. Get that real quick in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, start at verse 12. All these things come upon us, and this is what Satan was trying to get Christ to do. But if Christ would have took up Satan on his offer, Christ, uh, which it would have never happened because it wasn't prophesied to happen. He was the son of God. But if, if we go into those things that Satan offers us, then we go into a whole realm of spiritual wickedness that is on another level that you and I can't comprehend without the scriptures. Right? Read that, Wisdom of Solomon 14. The book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. Go ahead. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So when you follow idolatry, when you follow idols or your gods, it's called spiritual fornication. You are spiritually fornicating with that idol, meaning you become one with that idol. This is why you'll have people cut themselves. You understand? This is why you'll have people run up and down the church going crazy, foaming at the mouth. Like, where in the Bible do we read somebody did that and it was actually the Spirit of God? When they did that, Christ cast those demons out of them. They had demons and unclean spirits in them. So when you follow these idols, you got a demon and an unclean spirit in you because you're fornicating with that idol. You become one with that idol. Read. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Read. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. Read. For neither were they from the beginning. Because they weren't from the beginning. God was here from the beginning. Those idols were conjured up. They were made up by man. Read. Neither shall they be forever. And they won't last forever because the Lord going to destroy all demons. He's going to destroy Satan and all his minions, according to the scriptures. Now skip down to verse 22. Uh, two. Verse 22. Moreover. This was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. So our people call being in America having to vote for our next slave master, we call that peace because we're following an idol. Our people call um, uh, men walking around with HIV, but the white man giving them medicine to stop them from dying faster so they can continue to lay with another man, they call that peace. The ghettos, the, the, the slums, we call all that peace. Right? Go ahead. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices. Ab abortion, read. Or use secret ceremonies. That's your masons, your masonry, read. Or made revelings of strange rites. Or your revelings of strange rites, your Christmases and your Thanksgivings and things of that nature. You going to the club, the freak neek, all that, read. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer under fire. Because of these idols, 
you don't look at your wife and love your wife. You want to run and be with another, another man's wife. You want to run and be with a, another woman's husband because of idols. That's idolatry. Read. But either one slew another traitorously. It said either one, one slew another traitorously. You kill one another. That comes from idolatry because the Bible teaches us to love your neighbor as yourself. We can work it out. We can talk it out. We can hash things out amongst ourselves. We don't have to revolt, result to violence. But the idol says, no, kill that Negro. He ain't nothing. Go ahead. Or grieved him by adultery. Or grieved your brother by adultery by laying with his wife. Read. So that there reign in all men without exception. Blood. Blood. Manslaughter. Manslaughter. Theft. Th stealing. Covetousness. Stealing. Read. And dissimulation. Dissimulation is being fake. That's dissimulation. When, when it, the Bible says, let not love be with dissimulation, meaning fake, fake love, that real love. The love of many have waxed cold. It's all come from idolatry. That's the root of it. Read. Corruption. Corruption. Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. You always worrying. You ain't got no faith in God. Read. Tumult. Read. Perjury. Lying under oath. I swear to God I ain't do that. On God, man. That's perjury. You understand? Under you making an oath and then lying about it. Read. Disquieting of good men. Disquieting of good men. Treating good men, men that are good, that are doing right, you treat them like dirt. You don't do right by them. Read. Forgetfulness of good terms. And you forget good terms. You got a, 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 a give me an example, a um agreement yeah. between you and I. We have an agreement to do something and you just forget it. You don't do it. Right? Go ahead. Defiling of soul. Defiling of your soul. How do you defile your soul? Pornography defile your soul. It, it allows dopamine to, to secrete from your brain, you understand, which causes you to become an addict. You become addicted to the porn to where now the pornography ain't just you watching a man and woman be together, heterosexual sex. It's, 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 it's too far gone now. Now you're watching woman on woman, woman on beast, man on beast, all kind of evil stuff, pedophilia. You're looking at all this evilness. How do you get there? It starts with idolatry, your idols. Your temptations that you go after. Read. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Read. This Changing of kind going into what? Transgender. Read. Disorder in marriage. The woman is now over the man because of idolatry. Because those idols teach that. Read. Adultery. Adultery. And shameless uncleanness. Having sex on your menstrual, that's shameless uncleanness. You don't even care. Women not want to bathe and take care of themselves. Brothers not want to take care of themselves. Right? That is shameless uncleanness. You don't have no shame in it. Read. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. All evil stems from following idols. The Bible calls it spiritual fornication. Christ understood this. This is why Christ said what he said. Go back to Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8 again. The book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Because Christ knew what came with serving idols. He knew what came with following Satan. All that evil. And Satan knew that. But in Christ's um, um, hunger, because he was fasting, Satan came to him when he thought he was vulnerable. But Christ passed the test. We can pass the test. He gave us the example. Lean on the Lord and his commandments and follow not your own understanding. Go ahead. And he brought him to Jerusalem. Read. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And set him on the pinnacle of a temple. Go ahead. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God. If you are actually God's son. Read. Cast thyself down from him. He said, cast yourself down from here then. If you're really the son of God like you say you are. And Satan knew who he was. Understand that Satan knew who Christ was. The scripture says all things in heaven and in earth, seen and unseen, Christ created it. He knew who he was. So he said, look, if you're really the son of God, cast yourself down from here. Read. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And this is why all praises to the most high. This is why Christ was the son of God and the word of God. Because what Satan was quoting to him had nothing to do with him jumping off of the top of a temple. 
<laughs> it had nothing to do with that. Give me that real quick in Psalms 91, just so, just so they can know what, what Satan was quoting to him had nothing to do with what he actually said. It was. And, that, and the scripture does say that. He would give his angels charge over thee, but he wasn't talking about jumping down from a temple right. and trying to kill yourself. Right. That don't make no sense. Read that real quick in right. Psalms. Start at verse, um, start at 6. Psalms 91 and verse 6. Nor for the oh, sorry, 5. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. So this is a future prophecy going into the last day, the day of Christ, the day that Christ returns. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid of for the terror by night. Go ahead. Nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. That arrow is a nuclear bomb, a missile. Read. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. And you got a pestilence walking in darkness right now right. that you can't see called the coronavirus. The Lord said we shouldn't be afraid of that. Read. Nor for the destruction that wasted that noonday. Nor for the destruction that wastes that noonday. Go ahead. A thousand shall fall at thy side. So when this happens, this ain't never happened. This ain't happened yet. It said a thousand gonna fall at what? At thy side. The fi a thousand gonna fall at thy side. Read. And 10,000 at thy right hand. And 10,000 people going to fall at your right hand. What kind of destruction is this? Well, you can see people falling and dying. You understand? Read. But it shall not come nigh thee. It's talking about a normal nuclear fire in the day of Christ. All these people going to die and it's not going to touch you. Read. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold. And see the reward of the wicked. It said, only with your eyes and your re will you see the reward of the wicked. Read. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. Read. Even the most high, thy habitation. You have made God your habitation. That's why you're not going to get touched in that day. Go ahead. There shall no evil befall thee. That And therefore, when that destruction comes, it's not going to touch you. Read. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And nothing's going to come near your dwelling where you live at. Read. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Oh, ain't that what, ain't that what Satan said? So this talking about a future prophecy. It wasn't talking about Christ diving off the top of a damn, off the top of the pinnacle of a, what did it say? He was on a high mountain, a pinnacle of a mountain. He was the very top and said, hey, jump down there if you're the son of God. He's going to give his angels charge over you. That ain't what the scriptures say. That ain't what it's talking about. Read. To keep thee in all thy ways. Read. Thy, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So Satan was quoting this to Christ, and Christ was like, bro, you must have forgot who you're talking to. <laughs> you think because I ain't eight in 40 days, I'm going to forget that that scripture ain't talking about what you're talking about? Go back. Go back. Go back to uh, verse 9 and 10 now. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 9. <laughs> and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from here. So he on the pinnacle of the temple, the very top. He said, jump down from here. You the son of God. Go ahead. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. He said, because the scriptures say he going to have his angels take charge of you. They going to keep you. You're going to be all right. Go on, jump down there and kill yourself. Read. <laughs> and in their hands, they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Read. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I'm smart enough to know not to tempt the Lord because he might not save me. <laughs> he might let me bust my head for challenging him. Right. You understand? So no, I'm not doing that because that scripture ain't talking about what you say it's talking about, Satan. That's what Satan do. He come and use scripture to manipulate you because you're not studying. You're not abounding in the work of the Lord like we read earlier. You have to learn the scriptures for yourself. And what I mean is you got to, when you learn from the brothers, when you learn from someone, and Bishop has always taught us this, we are not here to be professional students. We are here to learn so we can get, grow in the spirit, so we can go and teach. Never to make ourselves equal with our teachers, learn from them, and do like the brothers in Thessalonica. Or they weren't Thessalonica. It was in, um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Let me get it because I don't want to say it wrong. You ain't got to read it. I just don't want to get it wrong. It's in Acts 17. Let me get it right. I just don't like to just say stuff wrong. Okay? <laughs> Y'all bear with me. I'm, I got a problem with that. Uh, the brothers in Berea. The brothers in Berea, you read about that in Acts 17, 10, and 11. They were more noble than the brothers in Thessalonica because what the apostles would tell them, they would go in the scriptures to see if it really said what the apostles said because they weren't no goofballs. They weren't no dummies. They had enough wisdom to say, okay, well, if he's saying it, I should be able to find it in the scriptures. Same thing with our leadership. Our leadership said, get your pens, get your notebooks, get your Bibles so you can read it for yourself. Right? So when you're studying, 
then you're able to know, oh, Satan trying to come at me with this. Satan coming at me with that. This is a temptation. This is a lust. This is a desire. This is something I have to refrain from. Right? Read verse 13 now. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. It said he departed from him for a season. But that means he coming back. Satan will depart from you and I for a season. And he'll come back. Things will get smooth for a season. And then bam, here comes Satan again. Tempting you. Testing you. Right? Trying to see if you're going to go after your lust. Because it's not the Lord testing you. Get that in James 1, verse 12. It ain't the Lord testing you. It's your desire that's within you that Satan plays on. That's why the Bible said, go not after your lust and refrain thyself from your appetites. Satan will put it in front of you, but you can grab it or you can deny it. When you grab it, it's something inside you that causes you to do that. Right? Not the, God, not the Lord. The Lord don't tempt you in that way. Right? Get that real quick in James. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried. Because when he's tried, read. He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That's that way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. That's God is faithful, who will, will with the temptation give you a way to escape. That's what that is right there. When you're going through your trials and tribulations, if you love God, meaning you keep the God's commandments, you'll be able to endure the temptation and receive the crown of life. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. So guess what? You know how you be scrolling up and down social media and you see something inappropriate that plays on your spirit? Did God tempt you with that? No. It's the spirit in you because you can scroll past it or you can press the button that or you can click on the profile and then block it so it'll never pop up on your screen again. So you got an option to do right or wrong in that, in that moment. It's the lust inside you that causes you to continue to watch it. When you see a $100 bill on the ground and you see the person right in front of you dropped it, you got two options. You can pick that up and say, hey, sir, you dropped the $100. Or you can say, you know what, I need the money. God doing this. Right. God tempting me. Let me take that $100 put it in my pocket. God said, I don't tempt you with evil. That's not me tempting you. That's your own desire inside you. That causes you to go after that lust. Read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust Read. and enticed. Read. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And then when lust has now conceived itself inside of you, it brings forth sin. Because that lust, that desire, that appetite causes you to now go against God and sin and break his law. But God didn't do that. That was you that did that. That was the temptation and the spirit in you that caused you to do that. Don't blame nobody else. Blame the spirit in you. Read. And sin when it is finished. And when sin has now run rampant in your members and caused you to do all kind of evil and wickedness. Read. Bring it forth death. It brings forth death if you don't cut it off. If you don't catch yourself and stop that sin. Right? Fight that sin with the word of God. Go ahead. Do not err, my beloved brethren. He said, do not err, my beloved brethren. Let's get down to 22. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word. Read. And not hearers only. And not hearers only. Just hearing the word. Read. Deceiving your own self. Deceiving your own self. So the things that we go on over tonight, we deal with on a daily basis. All of us. And we have to fight it. We have to fight the urge to lie. We have to fight the urge to, to cheat someone. To, to not do right by someone. To harm someone. To eat unclean food. To go after our lust. To watch these Watch these evil things to put these evil toxins in our body like marijuana and, 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 and um, coca cocaine and cigarettes and things of that nature to, to drink in excess. These are all temptations we all deal with on a daily basis that we have to constantly fight, brothers and sisters. And you can fight it, but you got to do the word. You have to put on the whole armor. Get that in Ephesians 6 and 10. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord Read. and in the power of his might. Read. Put on the whole armor of God. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor, man. Read. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you can stand against the wiles of the devil because Satan got tricks out here. You see what he tried to do to Christ? All praise to the Most High. The Messiah gave us the example. He couldn't fool Christ. 
Christ was able to endure the temptation. Like you and I, we have to learn to endure the temptation. Read it again. Put on the whole armor of God. The armor of God is the Bible. Put this Bible on. Learn this Bible. Have those three classes going on a day in your ears. When you at work and you got free time and your break, go to your car, read your scriptures. Because the woman inside, she, she look good to you. And you're going to catch yourself lusted if you're alone with her too long. Take yourself outside. Get away from her in the break room. Same with you sisters. You got lust on you, whatever for whatever reason. And this dude coming in the store every single day that you work at and he trying to flirt with you, cut it off. Say, hey, I'm married. You understand if you're married. Say, hey, no, nah, you know, hey, look, just strictly professional. Let's keep it all business. Uh, work. That's it. I don't want to have to, you know, uh, report you. You understand? For real, you got to let these Negroes know they bold. Hey, look, man, nah, these homosexuals bold. They'll try you. <laughs> I'm telling you, these homosexual dudes out here bold. You understand? You got to be careful. Right? So the scripture said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be, may be able to stand against the wiles, meaning the tricks of the devil. Go ahead. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Read. but against principalities. Come on. Against powers. Read. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Read. Against spiritual wickedness and high places. This is the reason your children, if you don't put a block on your phone or on their phone, they can go on YouTube and see anything. They go to porn on pornography for free and see anything. I mean, when I was young, you had to actually have somebody that had the DVD <laughs> to, to, to burn the DVD for you. and had to wait a week for them to do it because they had to sneak and do it when their mom and daddy went around. But nowadays, it's a click of a button on your phone and you can find anything. You understand? Because we battle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan is in control of this particular world, and he got his counterpart, the so-called white man, putting all the evil out there for you to be able to fall into. But you have to resist that temptation with the word of God. Understand there's something greater at the end of the tunnel for you. It's something greater if you endure these temptations. Reverse uh, 13. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So take on the whole armor of God. Learn this Bible. Read this Bible. Apply what this Bible says. Read. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand. I mean, refrain yourself from your appetite in the evil day. It's going to be an evil day where you're going to be tried. You understand? That, that you, you lost your job and now you tempted to go back to smoking that weed. You understand? Your husband done pissed you off, so now you tempted to slide back in the DMs of your ex. I'm telling you, this stuff happened. I, we talk about real stuff, Israel United in Christ. We, this is the book of life. We know you dealing with this. So we go over the scriptures because we know a temptation ain't uh, uncommon to men. The things that you go through is the same thing that all men go through. The scriptures tell you that. So in that evil day when you tried, when you tested to see if you're going to fall back into that temptation, resist it. Put on the arm of God. Call a brother. Call a sister. Hey, look, I'm tempted. I'm, I'm lusting. I feel it. It's on me. Help me. You know what I'm saying? Brother, I need help. Give me the scripts. You understand? Hey, give me, when you get a chance, call me. I need to go over some scriptures. You understand? I know these scriptures, but I need to hear you break it down. I need to hear you encourage me to keep walking, to keep fighting. That's why I don't understand how these individualites do it by themselves. You can't. Negro, you in sin. I know it. We know you in sin. Because the Bible say come together. You understand? Oh, I come together once a year with all these Hebrews that believe all these different things. Someone wearing fringes. Someone got on pants. Women got on pants. Someone got blonde drip, dreads. You understand? But right. well, we come together for an a, a international Hebrew convention. And who teach? You understand? Who the, who the elder? That's that reveling strange rights. Right, exactly. Reveling in strange rights, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm get off them, brothers. Read it again, 13. Wherefore, well, take unto you the whole armor of God. Read. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Read. And having done all, to stand. And put forth the best effort you could to stand. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So stand, having your loins girt about with truth. Read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And the breastplate of righteousness. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Read. Above all, read. Taking the shield of faith, read. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Deacon Yahweh says something so heavy. If you never deal with a certain spirit, Satan got a dart and he gonna throw it right in the chink of your armor. Here it is. You got this small little gap in your armor that big, and Satan say, "Oh, he ain't been working on the spirit of lust. Give me that dart. 
bah, you're going to throw that thing right. It's going to hit you right there where that chink in your arm is, where you've not been studying on lately. And Satan going to creep up on you with that dart and going to hit you right in that spot. And you ain't going to even realize it. Read. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Which is what? Which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Read. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Pray with supplication and prayer and supplication in the spirit. Read. And watching thereunto. And watching thereunto. With all perseverance. Perseverance. You got to fight. You got to persevere. Read. And supplication for all saints. And all saints. Skip down to 24 to my last scripture. Verse 24. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. In sincerity. Grace be unto all our brothers and sisters that love Jesus Christ in sincerity. So all praises to the most high God. I pray y'all got something from today's lesson or today's show. Uh, temptation, man, is real. We know it's real. <laughs> we deal with it every single day, but we fighting. And Lord, uh, we pray the Lord give us the, the, the spirit to continue to fight until the day he sent his son and we get out of this weak, frail body that we in. And we can be kings again. That's what we're fighting for. So we pray you brothers and sisters are doing the same thing. Uh, we are Israel United in Christ, Jackson, Mississippi. We meet at 2460 Terry Road. Our doors open at 1 o'clock every single Saturday at 1 o'clock. 2460 Terry Road in Jackson, Mississippi. We are in Suite 750. Okay? 2460 Terry Road, Suite 750. We meet at 1 o'clock every single Saturday. All right, so come and see us. Come and join us, brothers and sisters. We want you to come and learn more. Call us at 855-484-4842, extension 750. That's 855-484-4842, extension 750. All right, so we pray y'all got something from the class today. With that, I'm also got a lie to my left. Also to the right. And with that, we say shalom. Most high in Christ bless.